very special welcome to any guests who may be in worship tonight with us as we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Today's liturgy is printed for you in tonight's bulletin, and we begin our service by singing our, our opening hymn. rise. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad of it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. That the name of the Lord is to be praised. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this evening comes from Joel chapter 2. Yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why would they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending you to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this evening comes from 2 Corinthians chapters 5 and 6. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet known well, as dying, and behold we live, as punished, and not yet killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Please rise for the hearing of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading this evening comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For when... For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners, and that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You might have heard this story before, but I found it very fitting with our gospel reading tonight. It's about three young boys who come from a rather large church congregation. They were playing together in the neighborhood park, and as they talked together, they got on the topic of their dads. And being kids, they wanted to have the best. So they started bragging. One of the boys said, My dad scribbles down a few words on a piece of paper, calls it a poem, and gives it to someone, and they give him $100. The second boy said, Oh, that's nothing. My dad writes down some words on some pieces of paper, calls it a song, and someone gives him $1,000. The third boy laughed and said, oh, my dad is so much better than that. He writes down some words on some sheets of paper, calls it a sermon, and it takes six guys to collect all the money. (laughs) In our gospel reading tonight, Jesus talks about several things, giving, praying, fasting, and gathering wealth. Even though he talks about these different topics, there's a common thread between all of them that he's pointing out and trying to teach those who are listening to him. He begins by talking about giving to the needy. He warns about being seen when you give. And urges to give in secret so that no one knows what you are doing. Likewise, Jesus says similar things about praying and fasting. Saying that you shouldn't do so publicly so that you are noticed. But to do so privately so that you won't be seen by others. Is Jesus telling us that we should be reclusive as Christians and keep to ourselves? To not worship publicly or organize charity. Like the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 6, What shall we do then? Shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? By no means. Jesus isn't telling us to cut ourselves off from everyone else and to be secretive about our faith. What Jesus is trying to teach is that when you give, when you pray, When you fast, you shouldn't be doing it for yourself. You shouldn't be doing it to show off. In the span of over 2,000 years, not much has really changed. People back then wanted fame, attention, recognition, and today, still, people want the same things. We even get caught up in it too from time to time. We can be selfish and self-serving about what we say and what we do. We even live in a society that teaches us to take pride in being individual and to earn the approval of others by showing off in one way or another. Nothing is wrong with being good or even great at something or even showing off the talents that you do have. Not too long ago, we just had the 2022 Winter Olympics, where hundreds of men and women showed off their skills in competitive sport to be recognized as the best in what they do. There's nothing wrong or sinful in it. But the world and society have made things so much easier for the devil to whisper in our ears to turn something wonderful, something great, and to turn it into something sinful. These things become sinful when they become self-serving. When we do them purely for the recognition of being great ourselves. Jesus warns about these people in the gospel reading tonight. Saying that there are people who give to those in need simply so that they can be seen as giving to others so that they will earn the respect for their generosity. In the same way, these people also show off their faith in public prayer and worship, so that others will see them and think that they are so devoted to God. Jesus described such people as hypocrites, 
People who seem to be selfless and genuine in their heart. When their heart is actually twisted up with sin. Seeking a higher status among people. And then Jesus finishes this teaching by talking about treasure. These people who are only selfish are building up worldly treasure for themselves. That's where their focus is. That's where their faith is. That is their God. Worldly treasure. Jesus said, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He reminds us that the things of this world are just temporary. They will fade away with time. But treasure from heaven is eternal. It's everlasting. This treasure is forgiveness of our sins and eternal life with our Lord. And these treasures are free gifts. They cannot be earned by fame or competition. They are given to us freely through Jesus Christ because of his death at the cross for our sins and his resurrection from the dead. We hear this described well by the Apostle Paul in chapter 2 of Ephesians. He said, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Even though we too sometimes get caught up in our own pride, And want to have to be the best or to even have the best things. Like those kids in the story at the beginning of my message. Even though we want that. Even though it can be sinful when we be selfish. We have forgiveness. That great forgiveness through Jesus Christ. It's through him and him alone. Not by anything that we can or could ever do. Think about this teaching from Jesus as we enter into this Lenten season. Remember why we give. Remember why we pray. Remember why we worship. It isn't for any worldly gain. Because we already have received the greatest treasure of all. The treasure from heaven through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and died on the earth. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand We continue with prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel, and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick or ailing, the dying and those who mourn, for all who are in need, the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for those in prison, and for all those we name now in our mind and heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Bless and preserve us. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you all for coming out this evening for our Ash Wednesday service and